I think for me the the end part is a challenge. Hey, yeah, it never because, ends. because life is continuous. Mm-hmm. I think I don't know. Maybe you need to find out. I don't know how to define that. Um, a better sustainable. Yeah, because it's also those things of uh, you have a uh, we today is when you know this project we are doing now is mm-hmm. Friday second end- December yes. 2022. Yes, right. you know this project is ending on Friday second mm-hmm. December mm-hmm. 5 p.m. Mm-hmm. And at 5 p.m. we close mm-hmm. and put shut down. That's it. Mm. But that's not life. Yeah. Life does I think it it doesn't has to go. Up. Yeah. It, so yeah. how do we how do you put in those structures? And I think sometimes the catch is we think about the exit because there's always an exit strategy mm. as well. Yes, we yes. probably think about it towards the end. Mm. But probably you should be you should be having an exit strategy from the right initial from the point. start. Yeah. yeah, in such a way that probably you hand over. Mm. But the handover maybe doesn't happen very well. Maybe yeah. there's no buying from yeah. the other end, yeah. or there's no capacity. Mm. Uh, but then, of course, there is also the other part of the, uh, the the in terms of the you you should when you develop your project, I think mm. you should not be uh, you should not you should be conscious enough mm. to also be able to understand the underlying things. Mm. There are some things that are untold mm. or unsaid. Mm. How do you kind of understand them? Mm. Or understand the culture. Sometimes they even know uh, to say that's the culture what I w- better. Avoided, say, yeah, because yeah. sometimes we, yeah. we, 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 we design projects very well in a boardroom. Yeah. Uh, but then we do not factor in a lot of what... Uh, in you know, be a ground you different. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? So I think yes, that yes. that also becomes a bit of a of a problem in mm. terms of uh, yeah. So we fail to look at that. Yeah. Yeah. And then now, vested interest. I mm. think that's also a big a big issue because sometimes the biggest challenge, and I think we talked about change uh, yeah. change process earlier, is yeah. It's like when when you bring a certain change, mm. you are eating into somebody's uh, the comfort zone. Yes, mm. yeah, and even their gravy or their ugali. Yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah, yeah so yeah. how how do you ensure that uh, as there is gains, mm. of course there are certain losses. Mm. How do you sort of balance? Mm. How do you balance that? Mm. Because at the end of the day, we tend to be human. Mm. And sometimes our survival instinct mm. checks in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the fittest survivor. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, called Darwin's or who's yeah, uh, Darwin's, yeah. <laughs> theory. Yeah, yeah. theory. Yeah. So I think, yeah, so mm. I think it's that. I think, uh, and so I, I'll, 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 I'll say the back seats with uh, the ones who are driving the development yeah. uh, to an extent. Of yeah. course, the ones receiving it as well. Mm. And probably also, we, I think we need to change this idea of... Uh, I don't know, like terminology like donor mm, or how it's perceived. Yeah. Maybe you need to be partners or something. Yeah. You know, I think that has or investors. Been for like some time I know like yeah. there's aspects like yeah. impact investing. Yeah. 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 Uh how how do you it's yeah, it's been changing, you're right. Mm. So or I think part of what also would be helpful is how do we put in place more almost want to say private sector models mm. yeah into development ppp yeah uh, mm. not, not really ppp mm. but private sector led mm. development ah, like I now see. let's think about uh, i'm mm. trying to think of okay one of the things i'm very conscious of mm. is things like trees and mm. vegetation mm. those are things I'm, i i really like mm. How do if it was in Nairobi? Mm. Uh, how if you wanted to have let's say well manicured sides of the roads, mm. trees planted like what we want to do? Mm. Is there any way there could be a private sector approach? Mm. Like almost thinking like well even when I was coming here, there's these guys who sell flowers on the side of the road. Mm. Is there any way to have a, a deal with them? Mm. You guys plant flowers, trees, take care of them along here, and mm. then you can use this space. Mm. I don't know mm. something that that mm. that that is. Has a, yeah, so it's, it's not a, it's not an approach whereby like Kanjo now we say mm. this season you are planting trees, and then they don't water. But them. now yeah, <laughs> yeah, they don't water them because there's no or next season plant. maybe there is no budget for it mm. or there is no staffing. But how do you look at it in such a way that there are certain people who have interests mm. in maybe either that those is, things yeah. surviving yeah. in yeah. such a way? So I think maybe a little bit of an approach uh, mm. or, or models that are more private sector led. Because mm. that, that means the private sector has an interest. Mm. That person has an interest towards mm. that thing surviving. So mm. I think that's probably something that would be very helpful for us mm. when we look at uh, the mm. whole idea about development. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you have brought, you reminded me of uh, this friend of mine who did urban planning at the University of Nairobi, and he finished his degree. He did, I, I think, masters or something, uh, and he didn't. He, like, he's, he has finished the studies, he has passed, yeah. but there's nothing to do, uh, and, and that actually uh, shows you how much you don't even plan as, yeah. even, because yeah. government, I think, is the 
highest uh, resource uh, organization yeah, in any country. All, yeah. And uh, some of those planning, some of those strategies to make sure that you involve people, mm. even when people are going to school, they know, of course, if I take urban planning, I can actually implement some of these. Mm. They can, right now, he's a senior engineer, uh, a software engineer, uh, and he's working for some uh, remote company. Mm. Which means that if you could in, uh, like um, combine this technology uh, 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 knowledge with the urban planning, the way you are saying, it could actually achieve more uh, for the county or for the, even uh, the whole country. But nevertheless, is is out there, is doing amazing stuff. And uh, one thing that I have also uh, noticed about even the UN, as you speak, um, all these uh, organizations. You find that there has always been this issue of like you know what we are peacekeepers for instance yeah and uh, when you are peacekeeper that actually becomes vague if there's no peace where you're peacekeeping so you ask yourself mm. which peace is this that you're keeping <laughs> because there's no peace here yeah. and you can name a couple of african countries that actually mm. are not stable enough for yeah. any peace but you find maybe these organizations there even here in our country you have found that uh, Every year, there is a there, there are people who die of drought, and you ask yourself, is it the rocket science to like uh, f- you even dig some few borehole? Mm. And some of these places, I hear there, there there was a plenty of clean water that That's was true. discovered a few years ago. Mm. But you hear now the, ho- the the whole government saying, you know what, guys, we need to raise funds for these people. This will be done. And you ask mm. yourself, yes, it sounds good and noble. And mm. it's okay for those who are raising funds. I have nothing against raising funds. But that's not sustainable because if you have to raise funds next year mm. and the year after that, what does that tell you? Are we finding permanent solution? Even, mm. if, even if it's these uh, funds that we're raising, can we use these funds to find yeah. a permanent solution? That's true. Or maybe at yeah. least a decade or two decade mm. solutions that we say we raise funds once, but in the next maybe 20, 30 years, these people are sorted or these people are stable yeah. enough to That's serve true. the next generation. So my take here is, and you can give your take, mm-hmm. we need to think in, in the long term. Yeah. Not only as a person, but also as organization, as government. Because if we don't do that as Africa, I'm not talking about just Kenya. Kenya actually is way ahead. <laughs> That's what I figured yeah, out after in a lot of, yeah, going in some, uh, in a lot of ways. Place, yes. It's way ahead. Yeah. But as Africans, as a continent, we need governments. I know maybe some of the government uh, people will listen to these presidents and all that. Mm. We need to figure a way that we can, and this for all of us, it's not mm. selfish or anything. If we build sustainable uh, solutions that are, can serve the nation after mm. us, then we give those people a platform to build even better. Because we'll not be here forever. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. Mm. So that's my take. Mm. Before we go to the next <laughs> uh, uh, thing that I think I have some serious have questions some serious for you. Questions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no. I think you're right, and mm. I, I think uh, it's it, of course if any of these issues have mm. multifaceted, mm. Mm. but there is there is a few things that we can do better. Mm. And one term I liked that you said before was mm. the whole idea of mindset. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. And, and I think it's it's. One, even being able to believe we can. Mm, yeah. Mm. And also believing that it doesn't really have to be as it were. Because mm. it's similar cycles. I remember uh, I was young at the time. So probably as far back, I think 1984. Mm. Yeah, of talking of some drought. Yeah. When the uh, whole country was dying of... Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I remember that's the time of the yellow corn. Mm. The, the yellow maize. Mm. The yellow maize uh, coming in. Mm. And it's almost a cycle. It's mm. like we almost know. That's almost, it's almost 40 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah. almost know every so often this yeah. is going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so it's almost like we've accepted. Yeah. It will happen. Uh, unfortunately, there'll be tragedies. Yeah. Uh, there'll be this and that. And yeah. future things will happen. Yeah. But it probably means that uh, we need to look at these problems differently. Mm. And they're really, in a way, huge opportunities. Mm. And... Uh, we need to be the ones, let me say the Africans, who feel the pinch, mm. really be more ac- proactive in yes, creating yes. the solutions. Yes, yes. And s- sort of not not just look outward. Mm. Yeah. We do, we it's always important to look outward to learn, to the best sh- practices to share and, uh, yeah. and the likes. Yeah. But really, especially when it comes to models that will provide solutions for us, I think that's really that's really our responsibility. Mm, mm. It's really us who might be have the best lens mm, to provide mm, that. Mm. 
And so I think, yes, we do need to address the whole aspect of uh, the mindset. Mm. And yes, even in the long term. Mm. And also really look at how do we get away from these knee-jerk reactions. Mm-hmm. It's almost like uh, it's when it happens that we become mest- 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 mm. surprise, mm-hmm. Zaya. Mm-hmm. It didn't rain. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Because <laughs> we, I think we're in a time where but we even have more inform- access to more information, yes, yes, more yes, intelligence. Yes, yes, yeah? yes, yes. You can check more, the weather. Yeah. The next yeah, you can, three, four years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you can sort of make a decision how you're going to dress up because of mm-hmm. tomorrow, because mm-hmm. of the, we- mm-hmm. uh, the weather focused and it's right there for you to mm. to access mm. but how do we now use more deliberately those insights yeah so it stems a lot to leadership at all levels yes. at yeah. all levels you yeah. within your the yeah. leadership that you've been given yeah. uh, by the responsibility you hold yeah. uh, with what you do mm. right up to having the goodwill mm. at the very highest of places yeah yeah and then we'll be able to move somewhere. Mm. I think the whole idea is that uh, how do you get to a trajectory whereby, mm. yes, you may not have all the answers or solve all the issues now, yeah. but that progression, yeah. yeah, forward progression in the right direction yeah. in such a way that when it's going to take 10 years to yeah. um, have people not dying of hunger, yeah. but we progressively mm. working towards solving that mm. and solving it for posterity, mm. not maybe just for the next five years. Mm. But it's an issue of saying that We'll be talking to our grandchildren and great grandchildren and telling them that's like a historical, yeah, mm. his- historical story. Not telling them, eh, ata sisi wakati wetu tukiwa dogo, eh, aku wana chakula. Yeah, yeah, but it's an issue. Yeah, in, in terms <laughs> it's of not a good <laughs> issue, but you're normalizing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's become yeah. ah, it it inafanya kanga tu ni kawaida. It always eh, happens. Eh, yeah. Eh, so, so I think that's those are some of the things in terms of how do we knock ourselves out yes, of some yes, of yes, these yes, things. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Thank you so much for that take. And actually, if someone listens to this, I'm sure it's practical, practical it's doable, and it doesn't require one person. It's a collective uh, action that is required. Now, Google. Mm. Google is here, and I'm excited that Google is here. I'm sure Apple is coming. Mm. All these, uh, you know, uh, different companies mm. uh, from all over the world, Huawei, Sony, all these guys. Yeah. It might not be tomorrow. It might not be next year, but I'm 100% sure the same way I see the sunrise, mm-hmm. these guys will be in Africa. Yeah. And I'm so proud that I started this journey, this personal, mm-hmm. 10 years or 12 years ago, knowing that at some point, mm-hmm. if this happens, we need to be ready. I still feel we have not scratched the surface. As long as, as, much, as much as these guys are here, yeah, yeah. we have not scratched the surface. And what I mean by this is, and you can correct me now, you have traveled. Mm. I have not traveled so much in Africa, mm. but I've traveled elsewhere. Okay. That Africa, we need to get to a point, and I think even what you have talked about uh, in a few, in a few mm. moments, is that uh, in Africa, we need to create wealth. Mm-hmm. So that when this all these guys set up camp here and even they don't have to set up camp maybe we might build our own i don't know yeah, yeah. google apple mm-hmm. or whatever and and maybe provide solutions yeah. or create partnership so when this happens we are able even to consume some of these mm-hmm. products that it's self sustainable because what happens is that if we keep consuming because that's why that's what has gotten us where we are we keep consuming to an extent that we cannot be able to sustain that consumption yeah. and someone else determines at what cost you consume. Mm. So, given that you're a public, uh, public mm-hmm. affairs manager, yes. and I can see you deal with uh, legislation, uh, leaders in the market, partnerships, mm-hmm. and not only in Africa, but across other countries. So that means you have access as much as you've been serving for mm-hmm. the last eight months. You, are, you know what works and what doesn't mm-hmm. work because now you're dealing with the you know, middle class uh, kind of economies or maybe even also mm. advanced economies, what do you think Google has in store for Africa now that they have the camp here? No, and that's, that's, that's a very profound question. Mm. And uh, the reason I say that is that uh, I look at it in two ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of what's the opportunity for companies such as Google mm-hmm. and uh, what's the opportunity for us, mm-hmm. or the continent. Yeah. yeah. Because I think it's really two ways. Yeah. Uh, because uh, companies such as Google, they're not here for charitable purposes. Of course. Yeah. Mm. That's And what I mean by that is that, uh, and that's why I lean back talking about business models, mm-hmm. uh, really being part of the foundation of how we can address our challenges. Yeah. What I mean by that is that uh, 
also seeing what's the opportunity Africa brings. Mm. and maybe i can mention a bit what i think uh, the opportunity africa brings to mm. the world mm. uh, not just to google but the world mm. one of the things that uh, dividends that you have as africa is that uh, even for population perspective mm. in another maybe by 2030 the human so, capacity yeah mm. will be probably be about 2.5 billion or yeah. so yeah yeah Uh, in another 50 years we we'll mm. probably be having almost the largest population than in the world, than, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah than anybody else but the most important thing is that uh, also the age mm. yeah then in terms of age mm. so we we are going towards a point where by africa will be providing the workers for the world mm. and it's more of a question of us as africans asking ourselves what's the kind of workers you want to provide Absolutely. the world yeah? yes yes yes, yeah? yes 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 at what level mm. do you want these people to be uh, to be working what mm. level of skills mm. which of course uh, translates down to uh, the kind of income mm. so if you're talking about to a point where by because africa will have a very young population for true, a very true. long time yeah, yeah. and uh, so will we be able to high, provide the high value mm. uh, jobs or high value skills in mm. such a way that uh, africans will be earning a very good income because mm. that's really what you should need to be aspiring for mm. uh, the second thing as well is in terms of uh, This is partly what also the organiz- this such organizations see mm. uh, because for for example for Google mm. uh, whether it's a uh, YouTube uh, search mm. uh, and any other products that Google provides yeah the numbers really matter yes yes yeah they yes, add yes. value mm. uh, they add value mm. and uh, for Africa we can actually be able to see that this is going to continue growing mm. and uh create more opportunity yeah so i think for me as well when it comes from a, a, a policy perspective mm. it's also boils down to in terms of uh, what's the kind of policies uh government set in place mm. are they policies that foster innovation or mm. are they policies that curtail the innovation mm. so if the policies foster more innovation it means that uh we'll find a company like google the bigger assets there is is not so much about the company itself mm-hmm. Because you'll find even the amount of revenue Google makes in such a market, mm. uh, or any company, mm. any other company, uh, global company, mm. there is a lot more the ecosystem mm. gains. Yeah, you find the, the ecosystem gaining tens or hundreds of times. Yeah, yeah. So you think about it from just from Google or how the number of creators mm. who are able to use, let's say, YouTube. Mm. Yeah, people mm. being able to drive businesses. Mm. The number of people being able to even build platforms or maybe. Uh, like maps mm. yeah you've been mm. able to use that maybe for delivery services yeah uh the the way we're able to use maybe such yeah. and others to to enhance our learning yeah so you find there's that entire ecosystem that is actually being able to to grow mm. out of having a company such as as, as google for us and so mm. it's a question of how do we can get that mm-hmm. yeah how do you mm-hmm. benefit from that mm-hmm. and how do we businesses that are growing from it and uh in terms of the ecosystem. Yeah. But I think that's that's a huge huge asset. So I think I think for me what I see for Africa is really in terms of us being able to build the right set of skills mm-hmm. and the right set of attitudes mm. in such a way that we can be able to be provide uh we can be able to get better quality jobs mm. uh, not just from companies such as as such as Google mm. but also from other the startups all yeah, these startups yeah, that are yeah, coming up yeah, yeah. how do we provide an environment yeah. uh, because now if a startup is set up and it's supporting 5 10 15 mm-hmm. uh, people mm. yeah and some of them you know support hundreds or even thousands of people those yeah. are the jobs you're looking for true, there true. is no other that's that's where jobs are coming true, from true. Yeah. and uh, you'll find that this tend to be Uh, better paying jobs mm. even translates back to government those yeah. are the formal jobs yeah. so taxes yeah yeah because uh, yeah. those are huge challenges that the government is facing yeah. so i think it really stems from this company seeing an opportunity yes uh and then for us also seeing how do we leverage on it as well in mm. terms of in terms of in terms of an opportunity mm. yeah i mean that's very interesting from the <clears throat> public affairs mm-hmm. but now from the vitukwa ground or the things grounds. on the ground uh, some of the startup feel like okay if you want to take uh, like 90% of our engineering why don't you just acquire us <laughs> because now that means yeah, the, the yeah, offer that you are yeah. giving our engineering you can't match because of course we are resource throttled uh there are more priorities things like acquiring the customer trying to build yeah. models that can scale they these are these things and now you find these resources that they have they cannot afford to match the engineering capacity 
uh, the others who feel like, why can't we just partner? Right? Because once you take the engineering, which is the engine, that's why it's called even engineering, mm-hmm. then that means that vehicle has stalled or maybe yeah, it has yeah. collapsed altogether. Uh, so what what is Google's plan? And I, for me, as a person who builds uh, tech ecosystems and I've been doing this for some time, <clears throat> it's a win-win for everyone. Mm. But for startup, it's not the same. Because for me, it's a win-win, number one, uh, that, and I don't know if there's a strategy. Mm. Uh, at some point, these people can still piggyback or maybe to some extent start even startups yeah, or yeah. offer the expertise that they learn from Google. But also there is a rumor that maybe these people are not learning so much from you know the engineering capacity they're doing there. So I don't know if it's a way of disabling the ecosystem that is growing mm. or not. Maybe you can debunk this now that you're an insider. Mm. Mm. Also mm. from Microsoft, because also Microsoft have been yeah, there. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, okay, I may not be the best person to answer that, but mm. uh, in terms of uh, what I think, uh, what I can say mm. is that, uh, one, you'll find... Like, for example, if it's Google mm-hmm. or it's Microsoft, mm-hmm. how many of these engineers are they employed? Yeah. It might be a hundred, two hundred. Yeah, yeah. Let's even shoot it up a thousand. Mm. But I think that's that's a fairly small number. Yeah. I know, yes, it has an, it could have an effect on the ecosystem, but mm. probably what it means is mm. that uh, there's an opportunity mm. in terms of there's an opportunity for us to build even more. Mm. I know, yes, there could be some distortion, mm. but I think the beauty about it is that uh, when companies such as Google are investing, let's mm. say, into mm. employing mm. Uh, such people with such uh, mm. high level of skills, mm. then they're seeing an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And there being an opportunity, it means that uh, even more people should be looking into how do they build these sets of skills. Mm. And the other thing as well you find is that a uh, company like Google also invests a lot into building skills. Mm. Not just for itself, mm. but for the entire ecosystem. Mm. So we have programs in Google that have built thousands and thousands of developers mm. and continue to do. Mm. And it's something the company will continue doing because they know mm. we're not just building for ourselves, but we want to build for the entire ecosystem. Mm. And since the company has the capacity to do that, it's taking that as a responsibility. Mm. That should do it for itself, but also for for uh, for the ecosystem. Mm. So I think what 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 I see there, then I see it as a huge opportunity. Mm. It means that uh, for persons like yourself who've mm. been developing skills in this environment, mm. it means probably you need to work harder, mm. or you need to work faster, or mm. you need to mm. imp- uh, build the be able to pro- produce more. Mm. If you're doing five mm. to ten, mm. because now. It's not just now. Mm. Uh, this what you're looking at the numbers now. Probably it's a modest number mm. because now let's just, let's say like three years, five years down the line, mm. the ecosystem will even grow more. Mm. It would be those startups you're talking about mm. will be demanding for uh, for more uh, for more numbers. Yes, yes. so I, I, I agree there could be some distortion, and without a doubt there mm. is. Mm. But it probably means it's the jolt we needed for for the for the ecosystem to mm. get to the next level. Yes, yes. Because yes. also we need to when you talk when I was talking about. Uh, let's say Africa being providing the the skills for the world. Mm. We need to be getting that number of people in such mm. a way that uh, uh, maybe examples you give of India, whereby you call, let's say, for a meeting of I don't know people with certain skills, mm. very niche skill, mm. uh, and you get thousands of people. Or mm. or China, mm. we probably need to get to a point whereby we are talking about those kind of numbers of people. Mm. And yes. Uh, probably looking at even models such as reference to in terms of partnering with some of these startups mm. and. Uh, we already uh, Google and others are already doing that. So mm. you see, they have outsourced a lot of these jobs or mm. partner mm. with some of these organizations to provide certain skills to mm. them mm. without necessarily taking uh, or having this mm. uh, these people working mm. in the organization. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean that sounds so good. Uh, mm. And and if, if if that is actually practically implemented, that would be great. And I'll tell you from a person who actually has tried to hack the way we should be ready. Right, yeah. and I would love to build maybe a thousand every week or every month or yeah. every three months, but there's something I, I'll let you in on, and I think if Google ever listened to this, mm. uh, from the you know expansion scale and skill capacity and everything, it's all about consistency. It's all about the resources that are available to you. You not believe this, but the guys who have built this skill have not benefited much, but they understand yeah, yeah. the impact of what they're doing. But something sad, and I think maybe that might change now that, you know, I always like mm. to say that if someone is new somewhere, give them a chance. And that's yeah. what I'm trying to, to say here. That they will realize that this over a thousand, whatever they have employed, someone took time. Mm. 
yeah, someone true. spend resources. So not only should they invest in getting that talent and getting it from startups, even startups actually use a lot of money, like two years mm. of you know uh, modeling, yeah, you know, taking care until that skill is mm. something interesting to Google or Microsoft or Mastercard or mm. this. As they do that, also they should have maybe double the resources mm. to build pipelines. Mm -hmm. What I mean is, uh, and I'll give this for free. So basically what uh, I started doing is reaching people at their second year, mm. or even sometimes first year, as long as you're willing, and taking them through the global standards of doing things, yeah. uh, matching what they are learning and how they can implement it. And once you create that curiosity, someone finds, maybe I should be learning more mm. about AI. Maybe there are these opportunities, maybe web development, maybe machine learning, maybe things to do with uh, you mm. know uh, new languages like Ruby, Rust, uh, C++, C Sharp, maybe taking the devices there for them to test and see things are running, uh, you know, and, and, and all that, and make it exciting. And actually, if you look at it, as long as there's that clear intention. Mm. When I started, there were zero commu developer communities, yeah, yeah. or maybe one that started IAP. But right now, there are over 20, 30 communities. GDG themselves, the ones that are uh, Google champions, they are across all universities. How are we using that to build proper pipelines such mm. that we'll never lack will be able to grow that because it's a collective approach That's for true. everyone. So I feel like, uh, you know, for whoever will listen to this mm. as a corporate, whatever you're using to employ maybe 4,000 or 400 engineers, double that resources in building a pipeline in the next two years to get another maybe 8,000 mm. because you have the, the capacity. And uh, sometimes, so I hear that the people who actually uh, carry out these projects, they don't have the touch with the ground. So for them, the, it's easier to hire someone and uh, go to Africa Stocking, for instance, and get maybe the five engin good engineers from Africa Stocking to take a KPI. But the next time they ask for another 10, they don't know what to do because there's no, the pipeline has dried out. Yeah, so what they do, they hope from one job to the other. And then the ones that they got to the other company, they get them to the, mm. the new company. And you see that it's not sustainable. Maybe that's true. To their best of their knowledge, that's the best strategy and it works for them. And I'm not judging. All I'm saying is that mm. we can do better, all yeah, of us. Yeah. Because at the end doubt. of the day, doubt, yeah. after the noise dies down, we are all Africans. And if yeah. this is not sustainable, and you have seen what Twitter has done in, I think, I don't know if it's Ghana or Senegal, one of those places that they said the cup, mm. we still remain here. Yeah, yeah. And we have to deal with what we were dealing with before. But that's it doesn't right. have to be like that. Yeah. So that's my parting shot. Mm -hmm. And you can contribute into it now that you're in uh, uh, policy making because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, uh, it takes the collective, even yeah. the government actually, there's a company that has always been looking to set up in Africa, specifically in Kenya. Mm. But the, 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 the rules the, of engagement, the, the, the they are not favorable yeah. for them. Things like taxes, things like, you know, uh, you know the ownership, things like having mm. local, uh, you know, uh, regulations. Yeah. It's not friendly. Also, as you engage these people, maybe these some of the things that you can be able mm. to, uh, to 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 weigh in, not only for Google, but I think for for this ecosystem to grow. Because I feel like uh, people in uh, policy, people mm. in, uh, in, a, in a in a position of power, our politicians, the leadership, need to understand that it takes all of us at this point. Mm. Maybe if we are in US or Russia, maybe it takes the techies. Yeah. It, it's as simple as that. But right now we are building this together. It takes everyone to understand that this is the way. And because for me, the reason why I'm passionate about tech is because you need a laptop and internet. Mm -hmm. It may not sound like a cheap investment, but uh, to me, I feel like the bar has been, has been yeah, lowered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Has been lowered. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, you can give your parting shot as well as you give your thought around uh, this investment. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. No, no, and I think I agree with you largely. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because... It's sort of like one thing, it does take time to build these skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not, and it's it's really what you're talking about, the competency. So it's more or less, yeah. can this person, uh, can this lady get things can done? Can she do it? Mm. Yeah, and it's very, it's, it's very practical oriented. So it's not mm. so much about you regurgitating what you've been taught. Mm. Yeah, uh, more so in theory. Mm. And so it takes time because mm. it's almost like, uh, almost something called an apprenticeship. Mm apprenticeship mm. where you're learning on the job mm. and uh, one thing I think that needed more which I agree with you is 
how do we coordinate and collaborate better mm. because at the end of the day the ecosystems benefits better when there's more of these skills mm. uh because you're able to achieve more mm. and also I like to special the part that how do you tie the skills mm. to actually addressing real life issues yes yes, yeah? yes, yes so yes. it's not so much about you having the technical know how mm. and i think for me one of the areas i really even desire to do more mm. is how do we expose our techies to what's happening real life uh, solutions yeah, yeah. yeah. we mm. need yeah maybe it's something we can even pick up together or figure out somehow mm. if it's not happening enough true, how true. do we expose them like yeah. now to the issues we talk about you yeah. have no water yeah, yeah. 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 some of the things we've I was about. almost asking <laughs> you by this now yeah. that you mentioned this <laughs> but i felt maybe you might not be the right but now that you mentioned it yeah. how can we address food uh, security how mm. can we address things to do with the uh, clean energy yeah. uh, pollution and all these mm. uh, issues that we are that mm. are causing the climate change and all mm. this because also i feel like partly we are not involving stakeholders yes if yes. you are talking about agriculture you have to talk to the farmers Kabisa. if you are talking about the, en- the 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 clean energy you have yeah. to talk to the people who own diesel and petrol cars mm. and, and, and engage them I'm not saying this should take like one year or two years. It can be a long term process yeah. mm. as we build maybe EV software, as we build, you know, mm. uh proper maps that actually, you know, do this. So I don't know if you are private to like what the process, maybe there is internal uh thing going on for Africa specifically. Yeah, as for, if you have to talk about aspect okay, let me call it sustainability. Mm. Let, let me put it that way, just yeah. for purpose of putting a word, okay. I mean a terminology. Yeah. Uh, so as to address things like the climate is changing that's a fact yeah but how do we leverage on more on the insights mm. uh, we actually have mm. so yes even for example for google like now yeah. i'll give you an example yeah uh we we've recently launched uh and it's open source it's available to anybody mm. something around floods flood alerts mm. that's exactly what you call it mm. in such a way that we are able to with the technologies google has let's say like the maps Mm, uh the satellites, the satellites yeah. there's certain data we yeah. are able to collect that Before. can be able to provide mm. your yeah, certain insights mm. and we are able to leverage for example android platform yeah. like yeah. the android platform uh, we have on our mobile phones mm. in such a way that you can be able to provide that kind of insight mm. so you can actually be able to know it's going to flood mm this time mm. so you get an alert mm. do something about it mm. uh, and that's just one level of it mm. uh, but the thing I wanted to mention is that how google approaches this mm. is we work with partner organization mm. so for example we are not subject matter experts yeah. Yeah. when it comes to environment yeah. Yeah. but we do have technology that can actually support yes. in yeah. such a way yeah. so we find with such a solution mm. then we able to have a partner who's able to even maybe ever build let's say technology mm. uh, riding on that mm. as a solution mm. for something yeah. maybe now you're the one who engages the farmers true, true. so most of the time for us we look at how how do we act as a, let me even say uh, it's not a, the best word to use how do you act as sort of like actually let me use the word aggregator or convener mm. yeah to actually be able to identify yes maybe this person is expert within mm. let's say if it's agriculture mm. this is an expert maybe from a policy perspective maybe it's government mm. uh this is academia and sort of sort of bringing them together mm. in such a way that they can leverage on it because yeah. like now for us as google maybe we might have the technology mm. but you probably not go into the ground and actually yes, do true, the, true. The, 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 the that's not work. your core but it's also not our core so we need to sort of have somebody else who either sees it mm. or we see them to do that mm. so even for me uh, uh partly and i think you write you write was what i felt to be my part in short mm. i think for me one of the responsibility i feel that uh the the, the opportunity google gives me is mm how much of the platform i have mm. can i use to act as that convener mm. yeah so how do i leverage that particular space to mm. be able to sort of identify this and that should mm. come together mm. to work together to work on issues mm. so that's part of what i see as being my role and responsibility mm. of course i can't do it all by myself but true, the idea true. is what can i be able to 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 leverage mm. what can i be able to uh influence mm. in such a way that there is more of that because mm. now sometimes what i what i see and ties also what you said about the the, the people in the tech world yeah. the tech is mm. needing to understand the, the issues mm. uh, is also for me to look at how do i one mm. really act more as an ambassador mm. of the company 
mm. into the region or yeah. the country yeah. what you can make people understand and appreciate more what can google possibly do yeah at the same time mm. be able to learn and gain insights yeah. from our region parts of the world to take yeah. into the organization in such a way that they we able to be more relevant mm. as a company yeah yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's so much that we are not talking about just the same technology you have elsewhere as it as it were mm. bring it here yeah. maybe even have technology that is uniquely uh developed for a region mm. so i think for me the key thing is really how do we get more people working together mm. Mm. how do we get out, out of our silos because mm. all of us do amazing things yeah. but kila mtu tumeji we have our we, own, we, we are we are own cocoons mm-hmm. in a way mm. and we happy we are doing amazing things mm. but you can actually do a lot more true, through the true. question of how do we mm. crack out of that cocoon mm. and blossom mm. so i really for me this that's that's a question my god so mm. i really ask myself mm. all the time how do we crack all of us get out of a thing mm. and be able to to flourish mm. are you a broker <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you can put it that way. It, it could be. Uh, yeah, yeah. But in terms of brokering, yeah. but you're actually right. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, and I did a course. Mm. Uh, I don't know, I think maybe I didn't even highlight it in my, in my CV. Mm. A course called Partnership Brokering. Mm. Yeah, and Partnership mm. Brokering is also as of being able to see mm. maybe this thing needs to be done. Mm. Uh, it's... I cannot necessarily do it by myself mm. or even if I do it myself I can only do 20% 3% okay. mm. but I can actually see you can come in and do this part the mm. other person can do this the other mm. person can do this mm. so for me I think that's really defined a lot of my career as mm. well it's something I I find I find very I really enjoy doing mm. sort of mm. like trying to identify different people mm. or different organizations let's come figure out something sometimes even come together on the table you don't know exactly but I think there's something we can actually do together so yeah, yeah. Partnership broker. <laughs> <laughs> the man himself, the man himself, Alex Ningi, uh, Imagine Market Public Affairs Manager at Google. Maybe we sh- should chat uh, maybe a few years from now and uh, yeah. or a few months, you never know, uh, and try to see how much we can do. But I'm open for partnership, Alex. So oh, sure. I'm o- I've always been collaboration yeah. uh, instead of competition. And uh, any any person who is passionate about building tech ecosystem, uh, scaling, and not only in Kenya but across Africa, mm. that's something that I'm so so passionate about because I believe that that's my purpose to make yeah. sure that everyone achieves their maximum potential. This has been Africa's Talking Podcast in collaboration with Impact Masters uh, Media and Podcast, bringing you one of the best, the Impact Masters. And Impact Master himself, Alex Ningi, with over, over 15 years of experience in the technical system. And uh, that's it. Thank you so much for gracing, uh, gracing our show. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you very much.